in the fifth round. They thought that it would be okay, they could pass on those two picks in the fourth round, and he will still be there in the fifth. We'll have to wait and see. Let's head to Mark Malone in Philadelphia. It continues to be an exciting time here in Philadelphia. First-year head coach Ray Rhodes continues to be aggressive. He's pulled the trigger on three deals to move up, the latest to acquire a fourth-round pick. With that pick, they took quarterback Dave Barr out of California, will fit into this system and be a long-term project, a quarterback for the future. They've also signed free agent middle linebacker Kurt Gouveia to solidify their middle linebacker spot, and they're not done. They've got a fifth and a seventh left. They're looking to maybe even package some players here on the team to try to get more picks in this draft. Now let's send it out to Dallas. This is Chris Myers. The Cowboys just made their third pick of the round. In fact, the Giants did not make their time allotment, so Dallas jumped ahead of the Giants and had back-to-back -back picks in the round, handing in their selection linebacker Link Harden out of Oklahoma State. He's an outside linebacker, more of a raw talent and a special teams player, seeing uh, Dave Camp on the back of his head there in the war room. So Dallas back-to-back -back defensive players after drafting four offensive players. Let's go back now to Chris Berman in New York. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Let's join on the phone our uh, correspondent out at the 4949 Centennial Boulevard, the uh, 49ers headquarters in Santa Clara, California, Leslie Visser. And I know that uh, uh, they were ecstatic with the move yesterday with Stokes. They had him in. They already had him at headquarters, fitted him for a shirt and a hat. Anything else going on today? What do the Niners have up their sleeves today in the draft? Well, Chris, hello to you. In the true spirit of things, I'm speaking to you on a helmet phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are quite excited about Tim Hanshaw, you know, and, and particularly all the BYU folks around here. I'm sure Bart Oates and Steve Young like this pick. He's uh, perfect for Bob McKittrick, you know, really likes this kind of player, moves well, very athletic. He's a little bit of an unknown, and we know from Mel Kuyper's book, you know, Mel had him down around, I think, 49, 50, 51 in there. And uh, the 49ers were thrilled that he was available. They tried to keep it quiet that they were interested in him. So they're real happy with that pick. The rest of the day is really light. You know, the, the best they could do, and as you know, they'll keep working to move up even to the fifth round. But, uh, it, you know, it's a very light day. They're interested in uh, a cornerback and a quarterback. And uh, I spoke a little while ago to Eddie DiBartolo, who, as you know, is recovering from injuries suffered in a car accident on Wednesday. And he said that... Uh, he was very excited. He's home in Youngstown. He said he's, he's uncomfortable, but very excited about J.J. Stokes. All right, Leslie, thank you. Uh, I know that the Niners, if there's anyone that can pull a move without many picks, it, it's the Niners that may be able to do it. And all of us send our wishes to, to Mr. DeBartolo, uh, hurt uh, uh, ribs and, uh, and a clavicle uh, in a, uh, an accident as he was leaving uh, uh, the day after the Joe Montana festivities uh, in San Francisco. He's leaving to go home to Youngstown, Ohio. So, Eddie, we hope you're a little more comfortably resting. And I know you are indeed smiling over the pick by J.J. Stokes, but get, uh, get well soon. Get up and get around and get a driver. Don't, don't always drive yourself. You're like me. You're stubborn. Um, let's now go. Uh, where are we going now? Hank Goldberg is here. Hank, a couple of comments uh, as we reach the bottom part of the fourth round. Hank? Yeah, just one note on San Francisco. Uh, they do love J.J. Stokes, of course. And I talked to a couple of teams this morning who told me that the 49ers are shopping John Taylor. However... Teams are staying away from dealing for John Taylor right now because they figure that in a couple of weeks they'll probably be able to get him anyway without having to give up anything, Chris. All right, Hank, thank you. Uh, just a few picks left here in the bottom of the fourth round. We continue from New York and points beyond the 60th annual NFL selection meeting. a house is no vacation, but that's just what the Walkers got when they sold their house with our ERA office. The ERA seller security plan guaranteed that if we didn't sell their house, ERA would buy it. ERA even agreed to take the risk of selling the house at a loss. When we sold it for more, the Walkers got the profit. They used the extra money to take a vacation. The ERA seller security plan, just the kind of help you'd expect from a friend. List your house with an ERA broker. ERA, first in service. How fast do you think we could sell our home? What if we find a great house before we sell ours? These answers and more are here in Answers from ERA, your guide to buying and selling a home. Helpful tips, financial worksheets, it's all here. For your free copy, call 1-800-TO-ASK-ERA. 
When it comes to just the kind of help you'd expect from a friend, ERA wrote the book. ERA, first in service. Who will steal the wind and rule the sea? The challenge has stood for over 140 years. Who will be the defender? Who will rise to the challenge? The America's Cup Defender Finals on ESPN. All right, we are uh, back uh, here in New York, and uh, there we are. Uh, welcome back. The fourth round has just been completed, so let's get you up to date on the flurry of picks at the bottom uh, of round number four. The uh, last one we gave you was Alundis Bryce, the defensive back selected by Dallas. Then they jumped up ahead of the Giants and picked Link Harden, linebacker, Oklahoma State, while the Giants were, because uh, then Joe, while the Giants were, uh, were passing, uh, which means once your time allotment goes, the Cowboys can jump up and make that pick. Tony Klein, tight end Stanford, goes to the Buffalo Bills. Frank Garcia, center uh, from Washington, goes to the Carolina Panthers. Then the Giants uh, got on the phone and selected Ben Talley, who is a uh, linebacker, uh, uh, Tennessee. Linebacker Tennessee went to the Giants. Steve Stenstrom goes to the quarterback from Stanford. Now the fourth in the fourth round goes uh, to the Kansas City Chiefs. At the top of the fifth round, Carolina had the first pick of the fifth round. Mike Centers, the wide receiver from Northwestern. We'll talk about Stenstrom in a moment. First, though, let's go uh, up to our studios in Connecticut and join the coach, Mike Gottfried and Chris Fowler, doing the, uh, the Buffalo to Hartford shuttle uh, with more on uh, the Giants pick uh, tally. Gentlemen? That's right. The Giants waited a couple of picks, gambled, and the Cowboys ended up taking a linebacker. Even though uh, the Giants had that pick, they passed. Dallas takes the linebacker, but then they get Ben Talley, a guy who was on your board and ready to go. What do you like about this guy from Tennessee? Ben Talley's a good pick for the Giants. George Young knows that Ben Talley can be a linebacker, but also in Larry Marmee's defense there at the University of Tennessee played an outside rush in. So you get a combination, a guy that can rush from the outside and a guy that can play coverage. He's 6'3", 239, so you can pick, stick him on the outside. You can bring him. Here he is as an outside linebacker in the Georgia game against Eric Zire. He's on a blitz right here. Pressures Eric Zire. The one thing about Eric Zire, you could not sack him. Here's good tackle. He just has a lot of good things going for him, and he, he's a guy who can play a lot of positions for you. Play the linebacker position or a rush defensive end. I like this choice. So Ben Talley, not a name a lot of college football fans would know. One name to be waiting all day long and all yesterday long to be called is John Walsh. Here's a guy that might be one of the all-time plummet picks, Mike. I mean, preseason in college football, a lot of publications had him top five. I saw some even top one overall, the quarterback out of BYU. Now as we enter round five, nine quarterbacks have been taken. And John Walsh, a guy who comes out a year early, is still not taken. Chris, here's a concern of college coaches around the country because, see, a lot of guys will write that he's going to be a top pick or talk about the fact that he's a top pick. Agents jump on that. And he wasn't ready. He's not ready to come out right now. He should be back at BYU. When I talked to Norm Child, the quarterback coach, and I talked to Lavelle Edwards when I was out there during their, doing their ball games, they said, I think this is a big mistake. They were very supportive of whatever he decided to do. But he, if he would have stayed in and came out next year, he'd have been the number one quarterback pick next year, possibly. Uh, now, that's tough to say, but it's a very weak class coming out next year, but a big mistake. Yeah, foot speed, the concern for Walsh. He's not going to get any quicker if he'd gone Five, back three. to BYU. But as you say... There are just no quarterbacks available. It's tough to say whether a guy's going to develop during next college football season, but you're right. He might have cost himself a whole lot of money by coming out early. Very thin quarterback class next year uh, coming out of college football. And not that great the year after that as well. Back to New York now. All right, guys, thank you. So thus far as we go to the fifth round, teams have been blind trying to select, uh, looking at John Walsh, uh, the quarterback with all the statistics uh, from Brigham Young. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs zeroed in, as you thought they might yesterday, yeah. Joe, on Steve Stenstrom because... He runs uh, at Stanford, a similar type right. of offense that the Chiefs are now running under Paul Hackett. And uh, so now the Chiefs, they lose Joe, Joe Montana, but that they've got some young guys in there at quarterback here behind Steve Bono, who will be their starter this year. I think what you're talking about when you talk about the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers is the most complex and complicated offense that's in professional football. For a young man to come in and have to learn it, it's difficult enough. With Senstrom, what you get is you get a young man who now has played in that system, so he has a familiarity to it, 
So it's not all totally new to them, 